Theodor Schwann was born in Germany's oldest city, Neuss, on December 7, 1810. He was the fourth son of Elizabeth Rottels and her husband, Leonard Schwann, a goldsmith and publisher. Theodor attended a Tricoronatum, a Jesuit college in Cologne. There, he was influenced by the religious doctrines of Wilhelm Smiths. He remained a devout Roman Catholic throughout his life. In 1829, aged 18, he began studying medicine and natural sciences at the University of Bonn, where he met and was influenced by physiologist Johannes Müller, a trailblazer in practical methods of physiology and anatomy. Müller would later write Elements of Physiology, which became the leading physiology textbook of the 1800s. Schwann began his clinical training in Würzburg in 1831. Two years later, he moved to the University of Berlin, where he rejoined Johannes Müller as his doctoral student. Müller had moved from Bonn to Berlin. In 1834, age 23, Schwann obtained his MD and accepted Müller's offer to work as his research assistant in Berlin. Schwann's first work, and indeed his best work, was carried out in Berlin where he did experiments over a four-year time span to provide data for Müller's elements of physiology. In 1835, while studying digestive processes, he realized that as well as hydrochloric acid, there is a further substance in the stomach that aids the digestion of food. In 1836, he successfully isolated and named this additional substance. He had discovered the enzyme pepsin. Between 1834 and 1838, Schwann carried out experiments to probe the phenomenon of spontaneous generation of life, which was widely believed to be responsible for microorganisms. In one experiment, he took a broth of nutrients and sterilized it by boiling. He also heated the air above it to high temperatures. The result was no microbes grew and no biological or chemical activity were observed in the broth either. This experiment convinced Schwann that he had killed all the microbes and no more could be produced. So, the theory of spontaneous generation was proved incorrect. Schwann identified the role of microorganisms in putrefaction and alcohol fermentation. He carried out a variety of fermentation experiments and by 1836 had gathered enough evidence to convince himself that the conversion of sugar to alcohol during fermentation was a biological process that required the action of a living substance, yeast, rather than a chemical process of sugar oxidation. As with usual groundbreaking facts, Schwann's explanation of fermentation was ridiculed by other scientists. Acceptance only came with Louis Pasteur's work over a decade later. In early 1600s, plant cells had been discovered by Robert Hooke. Blood cells had been seen by Jan Swammerdam in 1668 and then described much more clearly by Antion van Leeuwenhoek in 1674. Leeuwenhoek had gone on to discover bacteria in 1676. As increasingly powerful microscopes became more widely available, the structural details in animals and plant cells were seen by even more scientists, but the fundamental importance of cells remained undiscovered. In 1838, the botanist Matthias Schleiden, one of Schwann's academic friends, published an article discussing the structure and origin of plant cells. He made the first, albeit partial, proposal of the cell doctrine. This proposal interested Schwann, and the more he thought about it, the more he believed it could be true for animal cells as well as plant cells, although he was uncertain about the status of muscles and nerve cells. He invited Schleiden to the operating theatre, and they jointly considered the similarities between plant nuclei and the nuclei in the animal notochord. Schwann then studied peripheral nerve cells, and in doing so, he discovered a new type of cell surrounding the axons and neurons of nerve fibers. The cells he discovered are now called Schwann cells. In 1838, age 28, Schwann felt confident enough about his evidence for the cell doctrine to present it to the Academy in Paris. The following year, he published his momentous book, Microscopical Researches into the Accordance in the Structure and Growth of Animals and Plants. Schwann's book described the cellular structure of plants and animals and the development of adult cells. It proposed the cell doctrine or cell theory that all living things are made up of cells. All animal tissues are built up from basic cell structure in the same way as plants are. He also noted that all animal cells contain a nucleus. In his book, Schwann also coined the word metabolic to describe chemical changes taking place in cells and tissue. Schwann scored a big hit with cell theory. It was accepted by the scientific world, unusually quickly. 
However, his book also contained a significant error because Schwann did not recognize that new cells are formed by pre-existing cells. Schwann made a significant contribution to histology, the anatomy of cells and the tissues on the microscopic scale when he placed adult animal tissue into five distinct groups. In 1879, Schwann was elected to the Royal Society and also to the French Academy of Science. Schwann lived a very simple life. He never married, he did not become involved in scientific controversy and avoided the petty jealousies that can be encountered in academic life. He retired in 1880. Theodore Schwann died aged 71 while visiting his sitter in Cologne in January 11, 1882. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'll like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.